let's revisit the transaction analysis that we did in the first chapter, except now we're going to look at it as an accountant would record these transactions, and instead of following the accounting equation, we're going to start using the rules of debit and credit to record items as journal entries. The first one was the owner invested cash in the business and received common stock as evidence for that investment. And the dollar amount was $50,000, so we had an increase to cash and an increase to common stock. How would we record that in a journal entry? Assets um, follow the plus-minus rules, so to increase cash, we would debit cash for $50,000, and common stock is an owner's equity, which is a minus-plus, so we credit the owner's equity or the common stock account for $50,000 to increase that balance. The second transaction was that the owner invested $10,000 of equipment and received common stock as evidence. So instead of debiting cash, this time we're going to see a debit to equipment for $10,000 and a credit to common stock for $10,000. The third transaction was the purchase of equipment uh, on account, right? So not paying cash yet, but purchasing on account, assuming a liability. And the dollar amount was $12,000. This time we're going to see that the business has more equipment, so debit equipment, $12,000, and we have more liability, $12,000 of accounts payable. The fourth transaction was that we paid $1,600 for rent. So we have rent expense, the expense account balance is going up and we have less cash. So we see now a debit to rent expense and a credit to cash for $1,600. That's why it was important to remember that the negative is in front of the expense category. So it's not a decrease in the expense account. It's an increase in the expense account, but that the expenses have a decreasing effect to the value of the business. The fifth transaction was that we performed services for cash for $2,000. So we have $2,000 more cash and the revenue account fees earned increased by $2,000. We would debit cash for $2,000 and we would credit the revenue account fees earned for $2,000. Sixth transaction was we performed services but this time it was not for cash it was on account and the dollar amount was $7,000. So instead of debiting cash we would debit accounts receivable, 7000 and we would credit fees earned, again that revenue account, for $7,000. So in accrual accounting, when you perform the service is when you record the revenue. It's not necessarily when the cash exchanges hands. Number eight, we paid eight, uh, excuse me, for $2,400 wages for the staff assistant. Oops, I'm looking at the wrong one. We paid $8,000 cash to purchase equipment. Uh, cash is going to go down and equipment's going to go up. So we're going to debit equipment for eight thousand and credit cash for eight thousand. Now we're going to look at the twenty four hundred dollar payment for wages for the staff assistant. So in this case, cash is going down by twenty four hundred dollars, and that expense wages expense is increasing by twenty four hundred. Therefore, we would debit wages expense twenty four hundred and credit cash twenty four hundred. Next, we collected $5,000 on account. So collecting from our accounts receivable customers, so the accounts receivable balance is going to go down by $5,000, and our cash balance is going to go up by $5,000. Therefore, debit cash for $5,000, credit accounts receivable, $5,000. Next, we paid $12,000 on account. So now we are paying part of the obligation uh, for the purchase of equipment. Actually, we're paying it off in full. So we're going to see a decrease of $12,000 in cash and a decrease to the liability account, $12,000. So debit accounts payable, $12,000. Credit cash, $12,000. So less cash and less liability. Lastly, we paid $500 for dividends. So it's a decrease to cash of $500 and we have an increase to the dividend account. Therefore, debit dividends, which follow the plus minus rule, and credit cash for $500.